Hi, this is Pam, Pam the Gropey Art, and today we are going to paint this cute little chicken. We'll do one like this that's facing upward, and then we'll do one like this that's pecking the ground, or you could even put something down there, like a piece of watermelon or something, for the chicken to peck. This is a sign that I made that I did, um, I showed you how to crackle. And then this is a stencil. I'm also going to show you how I stencil the wording. You could also paint this by hand if you like. It doesn't turn out quite as crisp around the edges, but it still it looks wonderful. And um, some people like more of the hand-painted look, which is great. So um, let's get started on painting our chickens. First thing I'm going to do, here's my piece of board that's been crackled and then sanded down. I am going to transfer my design. Um, let's do the upright chicken and see where I was practicing drawing and see which way I liked it the best. And then I'm going to put my um, graphite paper underneath and I'm going to trace it on there very lightly because I don't want to leave dark transfer marks because some of these colors are on the lighter side and they'll show through but um, it'll just give me a light outline. You might not even be able to see it on camera once I'm done, um, but it, it will be there. And who knows, maybe the camera will pick it up. What I'm using today are some plaid folk art colors. Some are multi-surface and some, oh, that's a multi-surface too. Okay, let me see. Well, I guess they're all multi-surface. Oh, this one is parchment and it's not. It is a regular, a uh, folk art acrylic. Um, it doesn't matter, you can use them together, but and I'll tell you what colors I'm going to use. First I'm going to undercoat the body and I have the light outline there and I'm going to use my number 12 flat brush. This is a Donna Dewberry one stroke brush, but any size flat brush you feel comfortable with. Now I'm dampening it. I always dampen my brushes first for uh, my one stroke painting because that helps to slow down the drying in the brush of the acrylic paints. Um, some people like to start with a dry brush, but it just gives you more time before you have to clean your brush. So I'm going to start with a lighter under color, and I'm going to go with linen. I'm going to start with linen, and that's what this color is on my... I have a piece of board here I'm using for a palette, but anything that works. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to undercoat her and I'm not going to be perfect because all of them turn out differently. A little bit different. It gives them variety. If you're one of those that needs to be perfect, I'm sorry. I know it bugs some people. But ever since I started taking an impressionistic painting course, I've learned how it really isn't that important that um, being perfect sometimes has its drawbacks. So. Come on in and just get the general outline in and then let it dry. So, got that. This little area needs a little bit more of a coat. And we're going to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to do the other chicken on the other end of this side. I don't have her transferred yet. So, I will move this over here and get that done. I'll be right back after I transfer. Now this one is facing this way. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to do the same color. This is just the undercoat. And I'm just, she's the one that's leaning down to peck the ground. You probably are having a harder time seeing the outline of her because it's very faint. And I got her a little carried away there with that. Just wipe it off. Okay, now her undercoat is done and we will let that dry. We could come in and do, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of details. Like I put the first coat of her feet on. Okay, we're gonna put the legs on with a liner brush. So we're just gonna come down with the yellow ochre 
Uh, I think they have yellow ochre both in. This is the Folk Art regular, but I think they have it in multi-surface too if you want multi-surface. And I'm just going to draw on her little feet. It's not too terribly difficult. And then her beak in the yellow ochre right there. And then I will do the same for the other gal at the other end. Let's see right here. And let me come up. And then her beak is right here. She's pecking on something down there on the ground. So we've got those done. And you can add some highlights or a little uh, shadow later after they dry. And now we can come in and we can do her waddle and comb. And those will be done in reds. Let me go choose my reds. And I'm going to go with the, like I said, the cardinal red. And this is just going to be the base coat because reds many times are not opaque. And I'm just doing a little scoop stroke. You could also do this with a filbert if you felt more comfortable. And again, it does not have to be perfect. So there's the comb. And now we'll do her waddle. And just fill in. Whoops, got a little carried away. So there's that part. Now I have to do the other hen. Same deal. We got her in there? Okay. And I'm going to come and do her. You can use the corner. Just kind of fill in. And see how transparent that is in the middle. We'll come in dark in it later. And uh, her waddle's a little wonky. And you notice I got a little gloppy there. We can go over that with the base color again to fix that. Or we can come in with this paintbrush with a little water on it and just kind of mop it up. You see that? I've left a little bit of a Stain, but that's okay. It'll be easy to go over with the uh, base color. All right, so we're going to let all of it dry and we're going to come back and we're going to put in her feathers. So now all the base coats are done, are dry. And I have put Cafe Latte on my palette board here. And this is linen, this is the undercoat. And this one is parchment, which you can see it's just barely lighter than linen. And if you want to just mix a little bit of white with the linen, you can get the same color. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the chicken's oh, head. I think I'll do the head a little bit. I mean, oh, my brush is too wet. Get some. And you notice on my, well, if you noticed on my other piece when I showed it to you, or I guess I could show it to you again. Um, it might be a little, you see her head is darker, and then around the tail and the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of come in with some strokes on the chisel edge. The chisel edge is this edge. And I'm going to go over this again. I'm just kind of filling in some color there. And then... Let me just, and that kind of gives it the feathery look. You can go in and just do it with a, the flat side. I mean, just kind of like this. If you want, float the color along. If you want to double load your brush, I think I'm giving you too many options here, but I'm just showing you that it's not important to do it any one way. You could double load your brush and then come along with the dark along the outside edge and it kind of blends in there. If you, get, if you feel like it's getting too dark. I 
All right, so that just kind of gives you that darker shadowed edge. And I'm going to double load my brush with the linen and the coffee latte, coffee latte. And I'm just going to kind of bring in chisel strokes to mimic feathers. The little fluffy feathers. Reload as needed. Add a little bit of the lighter color if you want. And just layer them in. And if you want to just do some of the lighter color for a little bit, just go ahead and I wiped my brush off. I did not wash it. And I'm just going to do, whoops, that got a little bit too much paint on it. But I'm just going to come in and do the chisel strokes. Leave some texture because of the thickness of the paint. think you've gone over something you want darker just go in and reload some of the darker in now I lost some of the edge of her back side there and if I want to I can come in with my paintbrush and lift some up right here and you see the back side shows and there's like some right there or you could do it with a Q-tip, or if I wanted to, I could come back in with white and pull, pull some edging in. So let's see, I'm taking a look at it. Now I want her wing down here. Let me finish putting some of these strokes in up here so it's wet. And then I want her wing. So it's kind of like right there. And I'm going to add some more chisel strokes to kind of mimic the wing there. And then kind of come up here. I'm kind of going over that top again. Step back and look. Doesn't have to be perfect as usual. I'm liking how it looks, so now I can. Um, come in and do another coat on her comb and waddle to give them some depth. So I have the Cardinal Red here on my palette. I have, this is the number two flat from the multi-pack that I usually have listed, that I usually use. And then I'm just gonna kind of fill in here again, her little comb. And her waddle. The smaller size brush gives me just a little bit more control. And then I have some burnt umber on my palette. And I'm just getting a little on the corner of the brush. I'm going to kind of wipe it off a little bit. And I'm just going to come in at the base of her comb and kind of add a little bit of shading, shadowing there along her head. If you want to add a little bit along a couple sides of her comb. Look, I got spread that red a little bit. And then even maybe a little bit at the base of her waddle. Just give it. And if you want to mix it with the red so it's not quite so brown on here, you can do that too. This is the red still wet so I'm just letting it kind of mix in. Okay. Now I need, I want a little bit of a highlight on her beak. So I've got, this is Goldenrod, which is a good highlight color for yellow ochre. It's not too bright of a yellow. And I'm getting my number two brush, just loading up the tips. Maybe it might be better to do it with highlight going on the top. might be better to do it with a liner brush if it gives you more control. And I will get my liner and get a little bit on my brush and just kind of put a little bit on the front side of her feet. Now this is just optional. It's not that big of a deal if you don't have it on there. Just gives it a little pizzazz. 
Right now we are going to put in her eye. And the original I used black. I'm going to see how the burnt umber looks. It might be enough. And it goes right here, the back of her beak. So, and there is her eye. I kind of got messy with her comb. Not comb, but her um, waddle there. So, I'm going to come in. I don't know if it's dry yet. I'm going to come in with a coffee latte. And I'm going to kind of fix that. And then over here, we got it kind of a little messy. Not that it's a big deal because our waddles are not perfectly round. But if you wanted to fix it, you come in with the white. Of course, you'd wait till the red's dry or you're going to get pink. And you can tidy up the edges by, and this is called negative painting. And there you have your hen and her little wattle there. Maybe this needs to go a little bit more. And there you have your henny penny. And if you wanted to highlight the top of the comb, go with a lighter red or a brighter red and you can do that. And there you have your hen. If you want to add some darker down here, you know, none of them look exactly alike. So it's up to you how you want to make your chicken look. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this other hen who is facing down. Get her over here. Let me move the camera. Okay, she's going to be the same as the other one, just about. None of them, like I said, both never turn out exactly alike. And that's a good thing. This time I'm going to go ahead and paint in the flat of the brush. And then I'm going to just come in with the double load of the linen and coffee. Is it, what is it? It's coffee latte. I keep wanting to say cafe latte. This time I'm turning the brush this way so the predominant color is the linen or the dragging color and they're blending on the brush. And then I'm going to dip into that lighter color a little bit. The lighter which was the, what was that, parchment. And like I said, you can um, mix a little bit of white with the linen and you'll get the parchment. I'm letting it blend on the palette, on the surface as I go. Okay, now I'm going to do the feathery strokes. I'm going to do her wing. It's going to be like right there. Turning around to look at it. Get a good look. Don't be afraid to go over something you don't like. I'm not liking these. that better has more definition has 
has better, you see the feathers have better definition in there. Okay, now we're going to go in and do our eyeball. You could do this with the tip of a liner, but I use my stylus. It has different sizes on ends. And goes right here at the top of the beak. And I didn't highlight, put highlights on this beak yet, so I'm going to do that right now. Take my liner brush. I've got my goldenrod yellow. This is a folk art acrylic. It is not a multi-surface. It's the regular. And I'm just going to put a little highlight up there. And I'll highlight her legs a little bit. Just getting a little bit of yellow ochre. And just kind of blend that together. Okay. We're all good. Now, um, her waddle needs to be fixed just a bit. So I'm going to go in with my number two and some cardinal, cardinal red. Yes, cardinal red. And give her her waddle back. I'm doing this at an angle so it gets a little uncomfortable and I can't see exactly what I'm doing always going around the camera as opposed to when it's just directly in front of me. Okay, I need to do a little bit on her waddle again. I mean her comb keeps getting them mixed up. Put a little bit more in there. I lost some of the definition on it, and so when it's dry, I will put some white in there to make a division between a couple of the... Eh, maybe not. We'll see. And there is the hen who is pecking the ground. Let me see. Now if I wanted to give them some shadowing underneath, I will do that. So, whoops, what have I got in my brush? To add shadowing, I'm going to float some color. And I'm going to, here we go, here's, this is floating medium. I'm filling my brush with floating medium, not a lot, it's just pulled in there. Then I'm touching the tip into the burnt umber and I'm kind of working it until it's kind of faint. And then it's just on the corner still. I'm going to come under her and I'm going to float that color. Now the her paint color needs to be dry or you're going to end up pulling that color into the float and you don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm just giving her a little bit of dimension by floating this faint color beneath her and when you don't feel it's dark enough just touch a tiny bit more in the brown and work it into your brush that has that floating medium in it. And I'll give the other gal some shadowing too. In just a moment. Whoops, see it's too dark. You can see what happens when it's too dark. But I'm going to take the other side and just kind of clean it up. That's just the floating medium side. And that kind of lightens it. Or pull your finger across there. Okay. Now I don't know if I want grass underneath her. My other ones had grass. And that they were pecking on. But I'll see. I might want to put a watermelon or a piece of fruit or something there and I'll think about it but I can stencil on the letters now or paint whatever letters on I could do another rise and shine sign or I could uh, put welcome or mom's kitchen I've got a nice broad space across here let me 
zoom out so you can see. I have a nice broad space between the two chickens that I could put. I could put mom's kitchen. I could put welcome. I could put a lot of things. Now the other one, let me pull it down here into view, is the one that I stenciled the rise and shine words on. And this, um, I had one similar to this. I had roosters instead of the hens um, over my kitchen window for a long time. Let me see if I have that out here. Oh, I do. One moment. I pulled it down and let me see. This is still wet, so I better move it. There is the one with the roosters. See, there's a rooster on that end and then a rooster on this end. Black roosters. Now you can do the chickens in black if you like and then speckle them with white so they can kind of look like uh, barred rocks or you could make them more colorful. You could make them anything you want. Um, it's up to you, whatever paint colors you want to go with. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe here on my YouTube channel and or over on my website at PamelaGropi.com for updates on painting tutorials, tips and tricks to improve your painting, and more. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.